you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. Our first step is to draw the electric field vectors that are produced by the negative charge as well as the positive charge. For negative charges, we recall that the electric field vectors point towards the negative charge. So over here at point P, we should draw a vector pointing directly at the negative charge. And perhaps we can call that electric field E negative. For positive charges, the electric field will point away from the positive charge. So over here at point P, we would project an electric field vector that's pointing away from the charge that's labeled positive Q. And we can label this electric field E positive. It will next be useful to superimpose an x-axis over here at point P. What we'll do next is take the electric field that we've marked E positive and break it into its x and its y components. For its x component, we would have a vector projecting to the left along the negative x direction. And then for the y component, we would project a vector straight up in the positive y direction. And perhaps we can label the x component E positive x, and then the y component is going to be E positive y. We'll do a similar thing with the electric field that's labeled E negative. We'll break it into its x and its y components. It's a little bit challenging to draw, but the x component is basically going to superimpose on top of the other x component. So we'll have the E negative x, and then the y component will be projecting straight down, and that'll be E negative y component. Hopefully we can see from this drawing that the y component of the positive electric field and the y component of the negative electric field will cancel each other out. So we can actually remove those from the drawing. And so we really only have to deal with the x components of these two electric field vectors. So what we'll do next is try to find the x component of the E positive electric field. And we know that the magnitude of that electric field is going to equal k multiplied by the positive charge q divided by the distance from that positive charge to point P squared. For now, we'll just call that D squared. Most books actually use R, so we'll call it R squared. Our objective will be to find that distance. We, in, in essence, need this distance right here. And we know that this distance here is positive three. That was given to us in the question. And then this vertical distance right here is positive four. That was also stated in the question right here. And so we have a three, four, five right triangle. That means that this distance right here will indeed be five. Now let's remember that we really are only interested in the X component of this E positive electric field because the Y component had canceled. We can see hopefully that this green X component is adjacent to this angle right here. And that that angle is equivalent to this angle here. We can even mark it theta if we wish. And so since the x component is adjacent to that angle that we've just marked, then we're going to end up using the cosine of that angle. We can see from our triangle that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So 3 fifths would be the cosine of that angle. So we're just going to multiply our electric field by 3 over 5, and that way we'll be dealing only with that x component. Another thing to note is that it's pointing in the negative x direction. So that's going to be pertinent when we get to the direction later. So then also let's not forget to plug in the 5 for that distance. So we'll next need the expression for the x component of the E negative electric field. And that's this blue vector marked right here. So basically we're going to set up a similar expression here. We take the constant and we multiply by the magnitude of the charge. Now it is a negative charge, but when we plug into the electric field equation, we're always taking the absolute value of that charge, so that will actually retain its positive value. We'll divide by the distance from the negative charge to point P, but from the symmetry of the situation, that distance is going to be the same. It's going to be 5, and then we square that distance. And then we'll also need, because we only want the x component, to multiply by the cosine of this angle right here. Now that turns out to have the same value that we discovered earlier. So the cosine of that angle will simply be 3 fifths. And so we're left with the two x components, one in red, one in blue. And in essence, what we can do is simply add these two together because that's going to give us the total electric field present at point P. To make it even simpler, we can take the value 
of one of the x components and simply double it since they have the same value. And that way we'll change the symbol here to total electric field. So we could put a little t here. So now we can plug in the known values. The constant is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. The charge was given to us as 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th. And then we have the rest of the constants. And then once we plug this into our calculators, we should get 1.38 times 10 to the negative 10 newtons per coulomb. This would be the magnitude of the total electric field at point P, so that's the answer to part A. And then the direction, we can see that the two X components are both pointing to the left. And so when we measure relative to the positive direction of the X axis, then we would simply have to go out an angle of 180 degrees. Since here's our positive X axis and we want the overall electric field to point this direction. So we would have to go 180 degrees. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe. Send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.